Welcome to this WiseOwl tutorial on using PowerView within Excel 2013. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. We'll begin by having a look at how to enable PowerView for use and also give a quick overview of what the tool actually does. We'll look at creating the data model used for the rest of this tutorial and then look at how to create and use tables, text boxes and images and cards and matrices including a look at how to drill down in data. And finally, we'll have a look at how to tweak Power Pivot data model settings to make it easier to create Power View reports. So let's get started. Before we begin looking at Power View in detail, I thought it would be useful to have a quick overview of what it is and does, so you can decide for yourself whether it's worth investing more time in this product. On the YouTube page from which you ran this tutorial, there's a link to a WiseR blog. And if you scroll down to the bottom of this blog, you'll see towards the bottom, I suspect, is a list of all the different parts of the tutorials and the files you can download. And by the time you read this, there should be part number 16, I think it is, an overview of Power Pivot, and you'll be able to download the files. If you do that, you'll then be able to open up a file, once you've extracted it, called MAM Data. And this contains a list of the 13,000 odd transactions in the Make a Mammal database. What you can do then is to use this to create a PowerView report by going to the Insert tab of the ribbon and by choosing PowerView. Now when I do this, I haven't actually enabled PowerView, which you need to do. And so I've got two choices. Most simply, I can click on the Enable button, and that's certainly what I recommend you should do. But if by chance this feature doesn't appear, you're going to have to do it the hard way, and this is how to do that. So I'll cancel out of that. You can choose File from the menu. You can then choose Options. You can go to add-ins, choose com add-ins at the bottom, click on the go button and tick the box which says power view. If I then choose OK after that rigmarole, when I now add in a power view report, it will automatically do so without me needing to enable the add-in. It's picked up on the range of data I've got in my spreadsheet. What I'm going to do is click within this and just press the delete key. Believe me, that's what I've done. And what I thought I'd do is create is show it's creating a quick table from scratch. So if you expand the range of data, and what we'll do is show the total quantity by species. So if I choose species and then click on quantity, the one is a text field, the other is a numerical one. It will automatically work out I want to create total quantity by species. I can click on the column heading once and then once again to sort it into descending order to show mammals is the most popular species. And then I could drag this table into the middle of my report to make it look a bit better. I could add a title. Total sales by species sounds good to me. And then click off that. If I want to format my title, I could click on it and go to the text tab and change the font to perhaps slightly smaller. It's a bit in your face there and underline it. I haven't actually got it selected, so I'll just repeat that. And that should format my title. And that really sums up both the strengths and the weaknesses of PowerView. The strengths is that it was very, very quick to create that report, and it's integrated as just another tab within my Excel workbook. The weaknesses, as you saw from the brief bit of formatting I did, is that it's not very easy to add things like borders and fonts and shading. Um, so it's quite limited in how you can get PowerView reports to look on screen. Although in the first part of this tutorial we used PowerView without an underlying data model, nearly always you'll have one. And so what I'm going to do now is very briefly show how to create the data model we need for this example in PowerPivot. For regular viewers, you might like to skip forward three minutes in the video. I've got a blog which is linked to from the YouTube page carrying this tutorial. And if you scroll down it, you'll see it gives you an opportunity to download the SQL Server script to generate a database. If you run that script in SQL Server Management Studio, it will create a, an MAM database. What we're now going to do is create a data model based on that. To do that, if you go to Power Pivot, now if you don't have the Power Pivot tab available to you, you need to enable it in Excel 2013, and you can do that by choosing File Options, going to Add-ins, going to Com Add-ins, going to Go, and making sure you tick this box. But we've got it available, so I can click on the Manage button. I did say we would go quickly through this. And what I'm going to do is link it to a database. It's SQL Server. In my case, it's in a named instance called um, SQL 2012. Yours will be different. And I'm using Windows Authentication. 
I can then pick up in the database I've created called MAM and go to click next twice and choose the tables I want to link to, which are Animal Calendar Center, POS Product, Region Species, Store, Town and Transaction. And for each of those tables, and this is a tedious bit both of the video and actually of, of doing it yourself, if you could get rid of the TBL. What we're doing is giving our tables friendly names so that they're easier to use and refer to. And because I've done this throughout the rest of this tutorial series, I think it might be confusing if I didn't do so now. And hopefully I've ad-libbed sufficiently to give myself time to cover that up. If I then choose Finish, it will import all the tables of data. And if I go to Diagram View, you'll see all but one of them are linked together. You can click on this symbol to show them all. The exception is a calendar table, and what we need to do is to link that to the POS table by dragging the POS date onto the calendar date and then releasing the mouse button. And what I can now do is go back into Excel, and I'm good to go for creating my Power View reports. Having created our data model, it's time to create our first Power View report. You can do that by clicking on the Insert tab and choosing Power View. In the first bit of this tutorial, you learned how to make sure this was enabled, so there should be no problem. It's created another report, it's called a Power View 2. What I'm going to do is rename that and call it My First Report. Although, strictly speaking, I guess that isn't actually true. The first thing you might like to do is to create a visualization. You can see it says in faint letters there to build a data visualization. What we're going to do is group by the species name, so I can expand my table. I wish I'd hidden some of these tables from client view, but never mind. It's a bit cluttered. I'll choose the species name, and what it will automatically do is create a table based out of that, and assume I want to group by species name. I also want to group by the year, so I'm going to choose from the calendar table the year column. Now on this occasion, it doesn't do that, and there's three ways we can see we've got a problem. One is that all these figures are the same, that surely can't be right. The second one is that it's suggesting we need to create, create relationships, which we don't. And finally, next to the year symbol is a little sigma sign to show that it's aggregating this data. It's summing all the years together. To change that, you can click on this little drop arrow. One of the things you learn in Power View is that most of the changes you make are done most easily instead of by clicking within the main body of the report over here by using the rather thinner panel on the right hand side. So if I want to change what I'm doing with a year, I actually don't want to summarise it. Not sure that's actually a very meaningful description of what I want to do, but if I choose that option, you can see it's now grouping by the species and by the year. Now what I actually wanted to do was to sum the quantity, what else? So I can choose the quantity from the transaction table, and it will automatically show the correct results. So that's how you can create a basic visualisation. Let's have a look at some of the things you can do to it. If I want to get rid of the quantity column, this is a fairly typical power view problem. I right click, and no matter what I do, I don't think there's a way to delete the column. Instead, you have to do it using the panel on the right hand side, and what I can do is click on the arrow to the right of that and say I want to remove the field. Now, one of the things power view supports very well is the undo tool, so I can press Ctrl Z and it will put it back in again. I'm not actually sure whether there was a mouse pointer way to do that. If I want to move my table into the middle of the report, I need to get this symbol visible. It's like a pointy hand. So you need to be on the edge of the table, or the visualization, and then you can click and drag it where you want it to go. As I mentioned before, you can sort by a column by clicking on the top of it. The little tiny blue arrow changes to show which way you're sorting it. If I want to resize a table, you need to get this double-headed arrow. I can then click and drag. When I decide I want to revert to the previous size, I can just double-click and it will automatically set the borders of the visualization to the default ones. You can click on a table and click on this little symbol, which will pop it out. And what that will do is bring it to the forefront so that you can see it in its entirety. When you finish looking at that, you can click on this little symbol, which will pop it back in again. If that all seems a bit pointless, bear in mind that reports can have layered views. So this table might be lying on underneath a chart or a matrix or some other visualization. So what popping out will do is bring it to the forefront so that you can see it. So that's some of the things that you can do with basic tables. If I want to get rid of my table, you need to click anywhere at all within it and then just press the delete key. I can also right click and choose cut. 
And when you want to revert back to having the table visible, you can click on the Undo tool or press Control Z. The Undo tool is a very important feature of PowerView when you're making quick changes. So that's how you can create simple tables. What we'll do now is look at text boxes and images. What I'm now going to do is add a title for my um, report and add in it background image maybe as well. Now I've got a perfectly good title here, but being perverse, what I'm going to do is actually get rid of that by clicking on it to select it and pressing the delete key. Again, you'll have to believe me that I've done that. And what I'm going to do instead is to add my own text box in. It'll work just the same way. To do that, I can go to the Power View tab, if not already there, and choose to add in, to add in a text box. My text box will say total sales by species and year. And then I can resize it by clicking and dragging on this edge of it. I want it to be in the middle, so I'm going to have to, have to get the pointy hand symbol and move it there. And then on the text tab of the ribbon, with this selected, I can center it horizontally and vertically. I can underline it maybe. I can make the font bigger, either with the drop arrow or by clicking on this drop arrow. I think I've actually gone the wrong way there. What I don't seem to be able to do is to make it bold. Even when you click on that, it doesn't actually make any difference. So that's how you can set a title. What I now want is an image. And to do that, I'm going to go back to the Power View tab and choose to set a watermark image on the background of my report. You can do that by choosing Set Image. I've got one here called Make a Mammal. What this does, what this comes from is a website called Mr. Musbaum. It's called the Elephant Wolf Girl, and it consists of the head of an elephant, the torso of a girl, and the hind quarters of a wolf. And it says mercifully, it's very rare. Just as well, I should think. But back to the subject in hand. So there's my watermark. I can do a couple of things with this. I can change the position, so I can choose to stretch it. Not a good idea. I can tile it. Yuck. Or I can centre it, which is how it began life. I can also set the transparency. 100% transparency isn't very exciting because I can't see anything, but maybe 90% would give a faint outline and be acceptable. Having said that, I really don't like that image, so I'm going to remove it. Maybe what I want instead is the same picture, but as a discrete uh, picture at the bottom right corner of my report. And I can position a picture anywhere I want by clicking on Picture and then choosing my picture. I can resize it in the usual way and with a pointy hand symbol, I can move it where I want it to go. But again, I'm not that keen on that either, I'll be honest. So what I'm going to do is to get rid of it by clicking on it and pressing Delete. The next thing we'll look at is matrices and cards, but probably in the reverse order. I've got my visualization here. If I click anywhere on the background of the report, what I want to do is add an additional grouping column. What I want to do is group by region, so I'm going to expand the region table and click on the region name. Now when I do that, because I haven't got this existing visualization selected, it will assume that I want to add a new one. That's just the way the Power View works. So what I'm going to do is click on that and delete it. Again, take my word, I press the delete key. Click back on the table I meant to add the region table, column 2, and now if I add it, it will be added in. I'm going to move it up a bit, so it's the second column in the list. The order will become important when I create a matrix. And then what I'm going to do is briefly is create a card. I want to get this over with as quickly as possible because I really don't like them. When you've got a table, you can turn it into a card by clicking on the drop arrow there on the left hand side on the design tab of the ribbon and choosing card. There's two views. In one view, each row consists of a separate card, I suppose. And you can also change a card style to call out, which looks, if anything, even worse. I'm not quite sure what the point of cards is, as you can tell. Let's make it into a matrix instead. Now, when you create a matrix, you have to forget that you'd ever used a matrix in SQL Server reporting services. And if you've never used SSRS, so much the better, because matrices in PowerView are completely different. All they do is avoid the repeated grouping levels being repeated in the report. But you can also enable drill down, which is much more useful. And the way you do that is by clicking on Show Levels on the Design tab and choosing to enable drill down one level at a time, rather than the default, which is to show all the grouping levels at once. When I choose that, the report contracts. If I position the mouse and try hovering over any of these species, nothing happens. But if you click on one of them, this little symbol appears and you can drill down. So I'm going to look at mammals, figures, 7408. I'm now looking at that broken down into regions. 
I can click on a particular region and click on that to look at the region 1378 figures broken down for the northwest. When I finish doing all of this, I can drill back up again. I'm sure Microsoft invent these phrases to get back to where I was to begin with. And that seems to me to be, to be the point of a matrix. For the last part of this tutorial, I want to have a quick look at how you can tweak some of the Power Pivot settings in the data model. To do that, you can go to the Power Pivot tab, click on Manage, and go to the Advanced tab. I'm going to make a couple of changes. For the first one, if you go to the calendar table and click on the year column, what we're going to do is click on summarize by and choose not to summarize it by default. So now when we drag it into a visualization, it will automatically group by it rather than attempting to aggregate it. For the price, it's highly likely that when you drag it in, you'll want to average the price, not sum it. So we're going to change the default summarization to average. And there's a few other things you can play about with on that advanced tab as well. If I now go back into Excel, you can see the data model has changed, it tells you as much, and you need to click on OK. You might reflect at this point how, when you're using normal pivot tables in Excel, this dialog box doesn't appear, and it automatically copes with the situation. But it's easy enough to just choose OK. Now to see the effect of the change that I made, I'll just get rid of that visualization by clicking within it and pressing Delete. And what I'm going to do now is produce the same table grouping by region, by year, and when I click on that, you can see that it will automatically assume I want to group by that. And then also by the price or include the price from the transactions table. And the default for that will be to average it. So that's made the columns easier to use. So that's a quick look at tables in, and basic visualizations in PowerView. For the next tutorial in this series, we'll have a look at how you can filter data. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseR website, where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.